Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So, for the past several uh, days and weeks, I haven't re been recording as many videos, so I am sorry about that. But usually, if you were to take a look back at my previous years, usually around this time of the year, I take a bit of a break. Um, it's not really a break, a uh, continuous break. I do videos just a bit less often as the guarding season starts up, and that's kind of my uh, second hobby that's as equally I'm passionate about. And, um, you know, I go through the whole win fall uh, winter and late summer and then kind of early spring I take a bit of a break but um, regardless I will be making videos just a bit less common for the next probably month but around May June I'll start up uh, probably every day maybe a bit earlier we'll see this is just kind of a fluid thing right it's more of a hobby hobby like thing um this whole weather forecasting I do know that this intro is getting a bit long but if you guys would like to subscribe or uh like the video if you enjoy this content consider doing so otherwise thank you so much for watching and let's start talking about this weather also feel free to leave any comments that you have down below i usually answer most of them okay so what we have going on right now is a rather active pattern across most of the united states and into southern canada we have many storm systems i will adjust my mic here it was a bit away from me let's start talking about this so first off i want to start off by looking at the long range all right, just a quick look, 6 to 10 day outlook, a lot of people are just wondering what's to come into April, March. I have a lot of gardeners on here, a lot of people that go and spend time outdoors, snowmobiling, hunting, whatever it may be. Notice that this is what the uh, Climate Prediction Center says, 6 to 10 day outlook, March 29th through the 2nd of April. So a bit away, you know, uh, it doesn't show the 0 through 6 day time frame, it's the 6 to 10 day. And it's updated today. You can see they're favoring above average temperatures, especially across the peninsula of Florida. But really, anywhere else across the United States, it seems rather warm. And the cold, while it may be there, will probably uh, not be significant, as you can see, they're not confident about. Honestly, this is a, not a confident forecast. It's a 40% confidence. So this probably shows that temperatures will be a bit above normal, but more, uh, more likely than not, just close to normal. Maybe across a few locations below normal. So nothing really out of the ordinary, no anomalies. In the 8 to 14 day outlook, you could see, which is surprising, they have more confidence in it being warm, which obviously indicates that the warmth that will be occurring then will probably be a bit more significant. And this is really through the last day of March, into the first week of April, you can see that they are favoring a lot of warmth and really just the Northwest, a really tiny amount of Washington is below average. Again, that may be a bit underdone, but uh, good news for spring lovers. Uh, and honestly, this this is this looks pretty nice. Again, not a heat wave, right? Just a bit above average compared to what you'd see in April. So if you see uh, 50s in April, maybe upper 50s, right? So pleasant. Um, if you were to take a look at the interactive radar, we have a classic storm system occurring <clears throat> right now across the United States. Notice we have a, uh, well, this radar is still loading and we just have a sharp cutoff right there. Um, uh, hopefully this loads in. But what we do have is very heavy rain occurring across the southern United States. And this cold front is really not as connected to the system as you would think it is. But you can see it's delivering a ton of rain across Louisiana and Mississippi. And let me just track this forward to put it into perspective. So let's take a look at New Orleans and uh, New Orleans and areas surrounding. So we had this very um, large area of heavy rain and some hail damaging winds possible, right? I uh, don't know exactly what it did, but you could see it definitely was a heavy rain event. And it stalled for many hours just south of New Orleans. And look at that. This is a seven hour loop. Look what it did there. It just stayed across these locations. And even the yellows and the greens, that's a moderate to heavy rain. And that red is just very heavy rain. So, you know, very, very heavy rain. Definitely some flooding going on, but you can see it does not extend far to the north into Atlanta, Birmingham. A bit of rain, not that much. Notice uh, the, the system that everybody kind of was talking about in the last few days is right here a classic springtime system we have a very defined low pressure right there the beginning to develop a, a cold front with uh several potentially uh strong thunderstorms nothing severe uh and if they are severe it will be definitely uh minimal meaning it'll probably be on the cusp of being severe so nothing too extraordinary notice quite a bit of rain across minnesota iowa uh, nebraska into south dakota wisconsin illinois Notice that we did uh, see this move to the north and east throughout this whole day. Look at that. Kansas City was in rain for much of today. Uh, Chicago started at around the afternoon hours. Wisconsin. Look at that. Very 
very heavy rain um, amounts going in, and you can see they're just pummeling portions of Wisconsin for several hours. Uh, though really, the heaviest rain fell across Nebraska, where the system was already raining since uh, yesterday at this time. Um, notice we do have quite a bit of showers and activity across the west. We actually have some snowstorm warnings across New Mexico. Definitely a bit of snow possible. Uh, a large system. Look, you can see the movement on its map. This system's moving to the north. This is kind of getting pummeled to the south. We have uh, snow moving uh, from um, to the south and east orientation you could see across Wyoming which is rather where it usually travels in this orientation you could see going from southeast to northeast this time it's going to the south and west which is rather unusual but it does happen and then notice this system is developing showers and some tea showers so really just thunder uh, thundery showers so definitely a bit of more rain is expected but uh, the main story that I want to talk about the dangerous story is what's to come after the system so Let's take a look at the models. The GFS, by the way, the GFS right now, this, uh, you know, there's the GFS and the GFS version 16. At this point, this model is the version 16. It has been upgraded. This is the new and upgraded GFS. It is uh, very good. I think the version 16 did a very good job, and now it has replaced the regular GFS, which it's now it's just called a GFS. So look at this, right? We have this system. A bit of snow will develop across Minnesota into Duluth, southern um, Canada, across Thunder Bay, into Ontario, and into Quebec, possibly. Look at that. Definitely a bit of snow. And we do have some rain developing across the northeast and really portions of the upper Great Lakes into the UP of Michigan and northern Michigan, the Mitten, right? Right there is why we have those winter storm warnings, a low pressure to bring some pretty heavy snow across New Mexico. Notice what it does do is combines with the precipitation from the south and look at that right there we see the remnants of this strong moisture maker across the south which we actually got to kind of uh, experience today right so the remnants of this will mix with this thing right here and potentially develop a very dangerous situation in terms of lots of rain heavy winds and of course severe weather Take a look at this. So we see this is now Wednesday, 1 p.m., so tomorrow, right? It's moving out of the Great Lakes. Showers, blustery conditions uh, across much of the U.S., uh, sorry, Great Lakes region. The Northwest, another system moving in, and rain across the Northeast. Look at this. We start seeing these two systems combine. It comes into a conglomerate of very large precipitation. And right here, there is a very, very significant severe weather threat. Now, if you're to take a look at the Storm Prediction Center... They have a enhanced issued for Thursday the 25th. Usually the National Weather Service does not issue a enhanced this far out unless obviously the confidence is pretty high. So you could say that the confidence is pretty high. I would not be surprised for them to issue a moderate warning, a moderate criteria. I don't think there will be a high, and even if there is a high or a moderate, um, people always get a bit too excited about, oh, what they will issue. The, the, this, you know, the message remains. It's dangerous. If you live anywhere across even the yellow area, stay prepared. There could be quite a bit of uh, activity, some t tornadoes possible, a large hail, damaging wind, all of that stuff that make up severe weather. Now, I do want to say that areas to the north, while you're not in these colors, for example, Chicago, right, southeastern Wisconsin, Milwaukee, uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, that area could see very, very strong winds, up to 50 to 60 mile per hour winds with extremely heavy rain. And that's, again, dependent on where the exact track of that goes. So, you know, severe weather is one side and just the actual heavy rain and winds that are associated with non-severe weather is the second side and which could be equally as uh, dangerous so notice right there right this is thursday 1 p.m um definitely a dangerous situation on unfolding and look at that as this pushes forward look at those isobars a very intense system if this was january or february you could imagine there would be a lot of snow in the backside of this into chicago right into detroit potentially some snow this was um Obviously winter, but you can see it's very warm, it's surrounded by warm air. It only starts developing, developing that snow into southern Canada, which cities like Quebec could pick up a quite a bit of snow on in northern Maine. But you can see that the severe weather threat may kind of continue, or at least with the heavy rain and strong thunderstorms into Indiana, Ohio, even once it's done with the south. Very, very heavy rain, strong winds, and this thing moves into the northeast with equally as potent, um, not the severe weather, right, but just a lot of rain, and that's good. They, they, some areas here are a bit dry, so they need that. Notice uh, that moves off and quite a bit of snow across Atlantic, uh, yeah, Atlantic Canada and really Canada that borders the U.S., so 
Uh, maybe just north of Toronto, Montreal, but Ottawa and Quebec could definitely see some snow. Notice right after that, we see very little break, right? We see another chance of some thunderstorms, thunder showers. This is into Sunday. Another large system, a very big one potentially for Canada, a snowstorm. And into the northeast United States, mainly a rainmaker. Um, if you recall, February was extremely snowy. Now we're seeing a bit less of that snowy uh, stuff, right? It's been predominantly wet and warm and more snowy further to the north than we would typically for March. So we went from a very snowy February to a bit of a, a bit of an anomaly in terms of uh, non-snowiness, if you will. But you can see there's another clipper that develops March 30th across um, southern Canada. This is pretty far out at this point, but you can see that's already our fourth system to watch for, and we're only at March 30th. And, you know, the pattern continues. You can see it drags a cold front, maybe a bit of snow. Um, some models develop a snowstorm out of this. Uh, very warm conditions, very cold conditions, constantly colliding, developing large systems, and unpredictable weather, as usual, with springtime. Okay, let's take a look at what what the uh, uh, European models show. So that was a GFS. Look at that. There's today's system. There's our snowstorm. There's our remnant uh, kind of moisture from what's going on right now across the south. These two combine and actually end up developing a, again, that, that strong system that has a very good potential for that severe weather. You could see this could be already going on well into Thursday morning, into Thursday afternoon. It will continue. Even in the winter where severe weather conditions are very minimal, with a significant system, right, with 984 millibars, usually the severe weather is very, uh, <clears throat> is heightened and increased. We've seen the December severe weather outbreaks, right, in 2015, that was a notable one. And that was because of a very strong low pressure. Um, it's kind of watered down, but, you know, the low pressure was strong. And in this case, usually during a spring and summer, you don't need a really strong centralized low pressure in order to produce severe weather. But we do have that this time, which is why the risk for the severe weather could be rather rather high i wouldn't say extreme just for um not to cause any sort of panic but um you know this shouldn't be a, a panic thing even if it was an extreme uh threat right be prepared you should always be prepared each year to go through your plans and uh stay safe unfortunately i usually don't do any live streams uh, there's great youtubers that do ryan hall direct weather they do live streams that could keep you informed or and obviously use a national weather service and their radios they will keep you informed so those are just wonderful sources um that are rec reputable and credible right so i uh, I probably will be, uh, Thursday, I may live stream, we'll see. Uh, but the, again, this will probably be a day, again, similar to what we had last week. I think, what was that? Uh, St. Patrick's Day, right? The 17th, where we had that severe weather outbreak across the south. Notice, right, we have a lot of tornadoes potential. Um, I shouldn't say tornadoes. I, I meant to say thunderstorms. There will be a tornado potential, um, for sure. I don't know exactly what their categorical highest potential is at this point. I would assume probably winds and damaging hail but uh yeah definitely as it moves to the north the threat does diminish for that severe weather but cities like chicago detroit indianapolis get very strong winds heavy rain and this moves into southern canada dumps quite a bit of snow and rain in areas that lie in its uh, path and then after that clears out you may think oh a few days of break well not even a few days like maybe Maybe 24, 30, 36 hours, and we see another system. Light rain, showers, potentially some thunderstorms, maybe a bit of light snow, and look, uh, another system that the European develops in a bit of a different fashion than the GFS, and you can see it does bring quite a bit of snow into the northeast, and you can see this isn't far out, so definitely something to watch for. It brings snow into uh, Boston, Connecticut, Maine, uh, New Hampshire, so more southern locations than what we've been seeing. And after that, you may think, oh, break maybe hopefully well if you see another system and you can see this one's a bit weaker a bit takes a bit longer to organize itself but it does eventually and it does sweep across the country so a lot of activity in terms of total accumulated precipitation uh let's take a glance at this notice uh quite a bit especially with those first two systems but the later ones bring in um more and kind of add insult to injury especially across locations that are already wet and have seen a lot of moisture Good news, quite a bit of rain across the southwest. Uh, that is definitely something they'll take. Let's take a look at the Canadian. I don't think I showed you this yet, right? There's today's system. You can see it does favor quite a bit across the mid-Atlantic in terms of rain. Um, and then there's our second system, right? The Canadian tracks is further to the south with that heavy rain south of the Illinois, Michigan area. So the severe weather threat would probably be corresponding with this track a bit further to the south. Regardless, still there. All models support a very strong system. And notice in the longer range, again, rain adds on and continues to favor the eastern United States and not really the northern plains, just kind of 
cutting those areas out, which is unfortunate as they need it the most. Um, if you were to take a look at a few high-res models like the NAM, um, usually the NAM is very good in predicting severe weather or giving us an idea. Unfortunately, it is still pretty far out, this, uh, this uh, severe event. Right, and notice that it does show a bit of threat today and uh, across the Gulf, really staying off the coast. But then, look, by Thursday, this starts coming on land, and look, that becomes rather high. And 5.9 that's a that's a pretty you know, this is out of 10, that's a pretty significant threat. Um, and look at that, that's actually higher than I thought it would be. I don't think a high will be issued right a high risk warning but mm, for sure a moderate uh, i think will be across the united states so definitely a concerning uh, developing situation so just stay tuned to my weather channel i will be making another video tomorrow and on thursday but again other sources that stream other youtube channels are great and the national weather service those are all wonderful uh, sources obviously national weather service should be your main one and your uh, prioritized one as they have the best information, evacuation orders, whatever it may be. Uh, you know, with this weather, it's truly hard to predict this type of stuff. So hopefully I just gave you a brief outline of what's to come, right? So this system will spin away today, the one that's ongoing right now. Not much severe weather. With this one, you could see quite a bit more rain across the south. This is 9-10. This is into tonight. You could see the rain ongoing. But then the severe weather threat, for those wondering, will be occurring as early as late Wednesday into most of the day Thursday. Right, and the southern uh, states, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Arkansas, those areas will be kind of targeted, but even into Missouri, Kentucky, southern Illinois, Louisiana as well. And notice, right, that uh, quite a bit of rain will be occurring across the large uh, cities of New York, Philadelphia tomorrow, uh, later on during the day. But then, look, by late tomorrow, or yeah, late tomorrow, 11 into 12 a.m., we do start seeing some rather significant already potential for some severe weather across the south into Oklahoma mainly heavy rain producers but then look by Thursday morning we see a lot of thunderstorm the development possibly you know tornadoes supercells all of that good stuff obviously bad but you know when it comes to severe weather that's what you would want I guess and then notice that into three you know right three four five six this continues and really explodes when the daytime heating kind of helps out across the Tennessee um, Alabama Mississippi area into Kentucky and then we could see it moves further to the north with very heavy rain across states that won't see the severe weather just very heavy rain and very very strong winds uh, into Chicago Indiana Michigan so uh, definitely a, a threat and you can see later on we see more thunderstorm potential so this model shows total accumulated precip at uh, these amounts. So probably a bit underdone, especially in the higher cells of uh, thunderstorms and whatever it may be, clusters. But uh, definitely uh, quite a bit <clears throat> of rain in other areas. So that's basically it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you all guys on the next episode. Um, yeah, that's all I have for you today. And again, snow will be falling across the north i do want to show you that i am kind of saying i'll finish up finish up i keep dragging this on i do apologize if you want to click off you obviously can at any time the united states snowfall uh this is what the national weather service predicts in terms of snowfall for the next 72 hours a lot right there which is where they have those warnings not that much across the upper plains uh or sorry into the area ahead of minnesota which i think could be a bit underdone a few more inches may fall there up to six in some locations but um yeah, definitely a decent event across the south. In terms of rainfall, a lot of uh, a lot of places will be seeing very heavy rain, especially across the south, potentially flooding. You know, not not good. You don't want to see those amounts ever across any location. And uh, you know, with these systems, a lot more gets added on, and we see uh, you know one, two, three inches of rain additionally. So. Uh, Get ready. A lot of rain for those areas, especially across the south, and it's severe weather potential. But for now, that is it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all guys on the next episode. See ya.